Let's look at the magnetic force on charged particles and do some example calculations. So first of all, this is the equation, which I've introduced in another video, that explains that the amount of force is equal to the amount of charge times the amount of velocity, also called the speed, the amount of the magnetic field, sometimes called the magnetic field strength, and the angle theta, which is the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. Now just to give you a quick picture of that, and we'll be referring back to it, what we've got here is that both velocity and magnetic field have directions. So maybe the red is my velocity and the B is my magnetic field. Then the angle between them is the angle theta that I would use. We're going to start with just one calculation here where I'm going to plug in some values. And I want to make sure that you can plug these in and get the same value in your calculator. So for the charge, you're going to have something in coulombs, and it's generally a small amount. In this case, this is 4 times 10 to the minus 6 is actually 4 microcoulombs. 45 meters per second, 5.4 tesla, and you want to have coulombs, meters per second, and tesla so that the way the units work out is going to be newtons. And again, I worked on those units in the original video that introduced this equation. Now for the angle, you could have it in degrees like I have here, or you could have an angle in radians. Just make sure that if you've got the angle in degrees, your calculator is in degree mode. Or if you have the angle in radians, you have your calculator in radian mode. And in this case, when I plug it all in, you should get 0.000687 newtons, or 6.87 times 10 to the minus fourth newtons. So it's a fairly small amount. Now one of the things that we could do here is we could change the direction, getting smaller angles and larger angles. And I'm just going to show some calculations that I've already worked out. So for example, if instead of 45 degrees I had a smaller angle like 30 degrees, I get a smaller value for the force. And if I had a larger angle like 60 degrees, I get a larger angle for the force. And that's because of the way the sine calculation works. I'll remind you that the limits for the sine calculation have to do with the 0 and the 90. Sine of 0 degrees is 0, and so you'd have no force. The sine of 90 degrees is 1, and that's going to give you the largest force. Just to show you that it really does give you the largest force, if I go ahead and grab some larger values for the angle, we'll see that our force starts to drop back down. And the sine of 120 is symmetric with the sine of 60, and so that gives us the same force. The same thing that 150 is symmetric with the 30, and then when we get out to 180, we're back to zero newtons. So that tells us how our values are going to change here depending on our angle. In most problems, you might be given the angle as an actual angle measurement. In other cases, you might have to figure out the angle because they'll start describing things. Like if the velocity goes towards the right and the magnetic field goes up, and once you sketch that out, you'd see, oh, that's a 90 degree angle. Or if the velocity went to the right and the magnetic field went to the left, well, that's 180 degrees. So you can start to see how you can use those words and then draw a quick diagram just to confirm what kind of angle you're going to have.